how the world will be deceived to accept the mark of the beast. Watch this video to avoid the trap of the Antichrist. For thousands of years, we have been forewarned about the coming of the Antichrist. We have had ample time to prepare for the tragedy that will follow the arrival of the Antichrist. We know of the dangers, we know of the promise, and we know of the retribution. So we cannot be deceived, right? Wrong. In spite of the Bible's admonition of the coming son of perdition, many will fall to his antics, many will take the mark of the beast. Why? That is what this episode is about. In this episode, we will look at why billions of people will take the number 666 in spite of knowing the danger. It won't just be non-believers. People of faith will be tempted and stumble. They will stumble because they disregard the signs of the times. They will stumble because they will lean on their own strength to withstand the thousand-year plan of Satan. The reason why many people will take the mark of the beast is discussed in Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 17. According to the Bible, no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. When we read the book of Revelation, we often think that these events will happen suddenly. However, the truth is that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, it is mentioned that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel. This shows that the devil is already actively deceiving people. If we ask people today whether they would receive the mark of the beast, most would say no because they understand its significance and origin. But how will the Antichrist, the devil, recruit people to accept the mark? There are two major ways, deception and idolatry. Deception is the first approach the devil uses. He is known as the father of lies, and he will come as a man of peace, deceiving the world into believing that he is the solution to all problems. He won't reveal his true intentions initially, but the world will trust and worship him. The Antichrist will speak evil against God, blaspheme his name, and shift people's focus from God to himself. His deceptive strategy will make millions worship him. Some will say, is it not just a mark? What harm can it do to me? Others will rationalize. They will say, if God does not want me to take the mark, he would not have allowed this to happen. But God is not the source of evil. Evil happens because we exercise our free will to disobey God. Evil happens because we rely on our own judgment instead of adhering to the warnings and promises contained in the Bible. In Psalm chapter 121 verses 7 to 8, God was emphatic in his promise. It says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. But as it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the condition for this promise is obedience. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Many people, even those who were once faithful, will miss the promise because they will be overtaken by the spirit of disobedience. They will accept the damnation of the mark of the beast because they could not trust and obey God. The Antichrist's second approach to get people to accept the mark of the beast is through the offer of material things. People desire a good life and wealth, and the devil will use temporary material possessions to deceive them. Without the mark, people will not be able to buy or sell, creating a strong motivation for many to take the mark. This leads to the second method idolatry. After many have been deceived, they will worship the Antichrist as an idol, adoring him as a celebrity. The world is already inclined to idolize and worship athletes, musicians, and other figures. Concerts and events demonstrate this worshiping behavior with thousands of people exalting and uplifting a person's name. People have become accustomed to worshiping human beings, and the Antichrist will exploit this tendency. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 is as revealing as it gets. It says, 
In the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Does any of these sound familiar? The devil's plan to make people accept the mark of the beast involves coercion, deception, and idolatry. He will deceive the world with false promises, portraying himself as a solution to global issues. He will also offer material possessions and exploit people's desire for a good life. Once deceived, people will worship the Antichrist as an idol. The devil's power should not be underestimated, but it is important to remember that his power is nothing compared to God's. It is important for Christians not to be complacent and assume that the rise of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast will only occur after the rapture or in the distant future. The book of Thessalonians makes it clear that the man of sin, also referred to as the son of perdition, will be active in the last days. I hope that you heed Paul's warning in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 and be reminded that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Only those who watch and pray, that is, have the requisite physical and spiritual alertness, will withstand the deceptive and coercive power of Satan and avoid the mark of the beast. Thank you for watching. Help us share this message with your friends and loved ones. God bless you. Amen.